Greetings, friends of On One Studios. Welcome to another episode of Between Us Foos. I'm glad that you are here today. I'm your host, Donita. Today, we'll be talking about balance, specifically dance life balance, how to balance things such as work, school, dating, etc., etc., and what's it like for people with those things. And joining me today for this discussion are our special guests, Richard Liu and Kevin, our co host. So, without further ado, Between Us Foos, let's talk about it so before before we talk about our situations and generally our own time management Mm -hmm. um in our current situations i wanted to explore dance and dating first because i feel like (laughs) not many people talk about that like you know online or like yeah in the social media so for for us whose dance life is obviously a really big percentage of our lives like what's your guys take what's our take on that start with with you richard about dance and dating yeah general thoughts first i guess i mean i think it's just like anything you tend to be attracted to people that you're around pretty often so i think dance and dating makes sense it does get a little complicated because you know everyone's around everyone so everyone's attracted to everyone and then it gets, <laughs> it gets really sticky if you're on the same dance team and stuff like that but oh, yeah yeah it can be a little more dramatic because you know it's not like the professional world where there's these unspoken rules right it's mm-hmm. just like a free-for-all out there <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's true yeah uh but no i mean it, it happens right it's, yeah it's what like, about you? yeah i mean just kind of in the position that we're in, honestly, as like On One Studios owners, like we kind of have to be real careful there <laughs> um, and stuff. But uh, so I've I've been no stranger to a dating app and things like that. <laughs> but for me, and additionally, like if I think this generation, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, this generation for me right now, like every time I. Um, see a dancer on any of those dating apps and I've seen a lot of dancers on there <laughs> so an automatic left like nope not gonna do with it <laughs> because Interesting. yeah like I I swiped right a couple times in the past and it just it's super awkward working the front desk and you're just like mm, that's Sup? why that's why but hey, maybe sorry if I ghosted you, you maybe if you weren't at the front maybe it'd be a different situation maybe you know? yeah I, yeah you, you could just run into them and stuff yeah that's very interesting um well you know like as far as like dating like um i think it dating's hard to already you know what i mean like to begin with yes. but then when you have like dance like practice you know you're in a team you're your choreographer your teacher it's even harder because like again if you are not the type of person to want to date your teammates or like people mm-hmm. at the studio then like then what you know what i mean like where do you find the time and the people if you know what i mean besides yeah. you know because where are the three places that you go work slash school the studio and the store you know yeah. what i mean like or the gym maybe you know so it's like kind of like that like um i feel like it's very challenging sometimes being a dancer and dating right because like mm-hmm. I feel like you kind of have to choose. Like, if you're not fortunate enough to kind of like find someone in the dance community, then it's like, okay, like, how do you split do your time, or how do you, you know, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's kind of difficult to like even think about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, definitely. Like, I feel like when when you're around dancers for so long, you already have that connection, so it's like so much easier to do it within that community. realm mm-hmm. right and then when you go outside of it like you i feel like it's like being in that dance world versus like outside of that dance world once you start i guess exploring outside of that dance world it's like you're like wait a minute like right, you what find do we talk about interests. yeah like, like and so, so like dance is still on your mind where you're like mm-hmm. do i tell this person i dance do i like <laughs> well, do i have to explain what i'm doing you know <laughs> like it's that it's it's just something that goes through your mind every time that um at least when every time I go on a date and so it's like uh, right. do I say I'm a dancer mm-hmm. like do I have to but mm-hmm. yeah and I think that's why generationally dating apps are so popular because people are so busy and like I, get, I think with dancers it's even harder so it's like especially if you don't want to it's in the, within the community then like how do you get out there you know what I mean mm-hmm. I think with dance, like, I get not wanting to date within the same team, but the reason I think dance is so cool about bringing people together, whether it be dating or not, is there's a lot of 
ways to spend time with people through dance, whether it be mm-hmm. taking class or whether it be, you know, preparing for a set for a dance team, projects, things like that. So there's a lot of opportunity to meet a lot of different people. And it's nice to date sometimes in the dance community because you have that connection with dance, mm-hmm. like you were saying. It's already implied. You guys have some a common ground that you can talk common ground that you can talk <laughs> about. You know? Um on the flip side, sometimes it is tough dating in the dance community because it becomes very easy to get trapped into the bubble of right. dance community where oh, you yeah. don't really expand or kind of extend your arms outside the dance community as a couple. Um, that's kind of my frustration with it, I think, at least. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I think I, everything, whether you date at work, dance or outside, comes with the kind of the thought of like okay for lo and behold it doesn't work out like you're gonna have to be okay seeing this person in the community yeah, too. Yeah. you know what i mean so it's kind of like so you that's why that's what most people i think some people think about is like okay if i'm going go out there in the dance community and you know experience dating and stuff then you know the repercussions are like if it doesn't work out then we're gonna be around each other because the community is so small right saturday alone the dance community is so small so it's kind (laughs) of like right so Mm -hmm. what are you guys thoughts about that oh my god speaking of small communities the gay dance community is even like (laughs) smaller (laughs) it's like every time i follow some some new gay dancer and stuff it's like i look at the mutuals it's all the other gay dancers it's like what (laughs) like dude or sometimes it's kind of funny that's like my like that's how i gauge like oh you are gay because it's like you follow all the other gay (laughs) guys like so like i mean that's something that I have to like already automatically like be be okay with. It's like we've all dated each other. Like we right. all know that we've at yeah. least gone or you know on a dinner or like on a drive or whatever together at one point. Yeah. So it's like you just kind of have to be okay, okay with it. With seeing people, yeah. yeah. So I think that thought. I think that's a great thing to to think about. Like the community, like it's great. Like you get to share this big interests of yours with this other person have that connection instantly but at the same time you know it's inevitable it doesn't always work out and if it does it's great but w- when it doesn't like you're gonna have to bound to like you know what i mean unless mm-hmm. you move you know what i mean yeah. unless, <laughs> unless you, you like move. you get what i'm saying yeah yeah definitely so um definitely something to think about i think um dance and dating is is an interesting thing to think about. Not many people really talk about it because I think, because as dancers, it's like, what, why? Yeah. <laughs> what are you, why are you talking about that, you know? But um, for me, like, well, okay, so right now, currently, I'm not dating a dancer. You know, I think the there's probably differences between our love lives. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for me, it's kind of nice because... Um, we share like our love for arts, but then his art is different from my art. Mm. So it's kind of cool because you can still connect in a way where like you have the same language, but it's just a different platform, if mm. that makes sense. Yeah. You know, like I actually never dated a dancer before, so I kind of don't know like, like what's it like? Like, do you always talk about dance? Is it always about dance? You know what I'm saying? Like, how does it like do that? What do you guys think? I think. We do talk about dance pretty often, um, just in relationships in general, dating a dancer. Um, And like I said before, one of the complications is it gets very easily sucked into just talking about dance all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, I fully agree with you about, I think it's not necessarily important to me to date someone who's necessarily a dancer, but I would love to date someone that has a certain passion for something, whether it be arts or not. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I think at the end of the day, the language that we would share is not, it doesn't have to be dance. It's mm. just understanding what passion does mm. for each of us. I like that. Because at that point, our actions towards what passion we're pursuing makes sense to the partner. Mm. And then the partner is able to full heartedly support because they understand the kind of passion that their partner is mm. has yeah. towards whatever. So it's kind of just a yeah. cherry on top if they are a dancer. It is like, a cherry yeah. on top. Yeah, it definitely mm. is because it's, it's easy to grow together in that space together. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, I always see, you know, like, power choreographer couples <laughs> like obviously Kion and Mari and there's Ooh. tons of <laughs> but it's, I'm always like dude power couple you know I like know. who's the next power couple like, oh, I know. Um, I know, I know. what about you Kevin any thoughts um 
Not so much. Like, I, I how mean, have your much conversations been with like non non dancers? Um, I think it's interesting because I do definitely agree with both of you guys in terms of like people who are passionate about something and stuff. And I like regardless of whatever the art is, culinary arts, like art, like painting, things like that. Like you still understand where they're coming from in terms of I need to do this because like I'm blah blah blah. Like I'm busy because of this. It's like and I get it because mm-hmm. it's like. I would be in the same boat too if I had like a bunch of dance stuff coming up. Mm-hmm. So um, when I bring it up, like I tend to bring it up quicker for people who I know have that kind of hobby and stuff, I guess, um, currently single, right? So I'm like just kind of dating around and the con- the conversations typically, um, the dancer thing comes up like a lot quicker if I know that I can use that as a connection in some kind of way. Um, and yeah, and I'm not like completely against dating dancers, if that makes sense. But for that case, I'd prefer it to like be natural almost. Like, mm. I mean, you're around each other all the time. So like, mm-hmm. it makes sense if it's naturally going to happen. But I'm not going to be like, Seeking I'm only going to date dancers <laughs> because they only understand me. <laughs> like, it's like, no, no, no. Like, um, yeah, it, obviously easier. But, you know, I'm I'm still open to either either case. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, I think with dating, um, sometimes it does happen naturally and sometimes people take the time almost like the not the initiative but they make that um choice to go out and seek just that you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. and i think um both are okay you know what i mean like i think depends on the person um when i think the best my opinion is the best way to go about it is like with dance like really love dance first you know what Mm -hmm. i mean and then everything will kind of just come into place whether you see someone naturally or you go out but i think like the law of attraction like you know you kind of just attract people that you that are like that you that you attract (laughs) (laughs) basically your actions attract the people that like yes will be will compliment you if that makes yeah, sense gotcha. so you kind of just yeah. want to focus on whatever it is that you are doing you know what i mean and everything comes to whether it's naturally or you go out and you know what i mean mm-hmm. so like yeah definitely like you you don't have to pick between the two mm-hmm. you know you can do both definitely yeah and mm-hmm. i would say like i actually applaud people that kind of try to venture out and date outside of the dance community just because it is tough it's tough if all you've known is the dance community your whole life because right. then like your only friends are in the dance community. Right. And I would actually encourage people to venture out, not necessarily dating either, but just venture out and try to meet new people. And if it turns into dating, great. But you'll realize that there's a whole world out there outside of dance. You yeah, know what exactly. I mean? Yeah, exactly. Um, I agree with you. Um, you know, I was saying earlier that dance is a pretty much, pretty, really, really pretty big part of percentage of our lives right for all three of us um obviously there's also the other percentages of our life too and um have you guys ever experienced where you had to decide like how much time you need to invest in dance versus how much time you need to invest in something else have you guys had a time where you had to like really make a choice basically yeah every single week (laughs) (laughs) well when was the first time basically oh wow um hmm I think for me, it's probably a lot of the experience that a lot of dancers share, but it was picking between college and between dance. Mm. Um, Uh Being a dancer that didn't start until he went to school, um, it a lot of times because we would have late rehearsals, practicing for you know bridge or prelude NorCal. um, A lot of times it boiled down to would I want to pick academics or would I want to pick dance? And so I came across that a lot, and I'm sure a lot of people do. Mm-hmm. that are in college and dance as mm-hmm. well yeah what about you yeah um i i mean same thing in college too um i think i really underestimated how much college would like ask of you <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and stuff so i mean i was dancing just a little bit prior to going to college um but then i was always under the belief that like you had the time to do everything like if i want to do it i can do it there's 24 hours in a day if other people can do it i can do it (laughs) but then i think especially more recently like understanding that having the time versus like having the mental capacity to do it is like completely different Different. right so and then i basically sacrificed a lot of time for myself like self-care and stuff so um that's where i started to have to like start to make compromises a little bit and think about everything right Mm -hmm. i would say both for me I had to really think about it in college like I had to sit down and think like okay 
what do I do? Like, do I just focus on school for now? Or do, can I do everything? Do I just focus on dance? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I picked school at the time. I took a break in dance and I was like, okay, I'm, this is the time where I'm going to decrease my investment. You know what I mean? In, of time towards dance and increase my investment of time towards school. Mm -hmm. That was like it besides more recently, especially with the studio, I really had to pick between, um, dancing and then working on dance because uh we're in the back end so much you know yeah. and then on top of that self-care so like um the older i got I, had, I i was like okay all this time since high school and college like i actually never made time for self-care you know what i mean so i was trying to do both and that was another decision to be like okay where is my what are my values where's where's my time gonna go now like you know like i think of it like a cup I never want to fill it to the brim. You know what I mean? Like 24 hours, yeah. But then when you get a cup of water, you never fill it to the brim. It's all brim. It's always like this much free. Mm -hmm. And because you need that to be able to even enjoy your drink. You know what I mean? Wow. Otherwise, you're just going to spill on you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> right? Otherwise, you're just like, you know, just spill all over the place. And then you lose you know, drink. <laughs> Anyways, I love analogies. But, um, it's a good one. Yeah, like straddling the line, like kind of, I think it's ever changing. Like sometimes it's like all, it's like this big, the amount of dance in your life. Then sometimes you're going to move it. And like, mm -hmm. you know, I think depends what you're currently, where you are in life, right? Mm -hmm. um, school was definitely a big thing for me to make these changes. Yeah. And then the studio happened, you know, so that too. What about you guys other than school anything else kind of like come up i mean even after college i think after college was even more of like a decision maker because it's like now you don't even have school to like say like oh like i don't have time to do it and stuff because like at that point you've been dancing for a couple of years assuming that you start around the college or at least myself i started around the college time i was like do i pursue dance you know like that's the question that i was like hmm. that too you know so like, I'm like and then of course when i was younger i tend to compare myself and my life with other people and i think that's okay but then i was always asking myself like man that person's really good like you know like how are they do how are they putting in so much time and doing school and doing you know what i mean mm -hmm. some like so yeah. i wonder about some of these kids right now <laughs> like it's like at that early i can't even imagine like i think about the 10 year olds that are around now and i'm like jesus like now like i assume they're trying to become dancers when they grow up i assume so like to make that decision that early is crazy mm -hmm. like they're getting homeschooled and stuff i think mm -hmm. yeah it's definitely a line you have to draw sometimes it gets blurred yeah <laughs> sometimes it's not as clear but sometimes you just gotta roll with the punches honestly like with recent stuff like you gotta decide okay let's take a step back <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, also your body like if your body can't do if your body can't dance like you have to take a pause you know what i mean and prioritize your health that too right a yeah. lot of people get overly um injured and stuff um oh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> right oh, like yeah. you you like kevin you have a lot of um back pains <laughs> yes yes i do i know um i know that's i guess that's the like the two forces that are kind of pulling me back and forth though sometimes because it's like i especially I, I guess being in leadership positions like i have to be at the forefront i can't just be like you guys got to do this like i have to set the example and it's kind of hard sometimes because it's like dude i'm like <laughs> tired all the time you know like i'm like dying over here guys but yeah. you don't, you're not gonna know that well now you do because it's on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but you know like it's 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 tough and i think that's where i really I, it was literally this year. I'm turning 30 this year, guys. Um, like, I think that's where Dude. I decided, like, <laughs> yo, like, I got to take care of myself. Like, if I want to keep, because I'm not, I don't, even though I'm turning 30, I don't really see myself stopping dance, like, completely, right. entirely. It's still going to be a part of my life. So I think it's, like, setting myself up almost for, like, the long term, basically, of, like, I still want to do this, and I still want to be able to be fit and mentally there. So mm -hmm. and taking the steps to basically do that. Mm. So like, um, Richard, are you, have you been in a leadership, dance leadership position 
before like you had to direct or teach or whatever yeah so in college i was part of a team called samahang modern oh, and okay. during my fourth year with them i directed them so, oh, yeah. oh cool <laughs> hey. so during that time um obviously because now okay um inside the dance life then mm -hmm. you gotta find a line between <laughs> directing and then your uh, own yourself. self growth as a yep. dancer so yep. how is that line um both of you have been directors i've kind of dabbled in it like for a, a season but that's it mm -hmm. but um what are you guys thoughts about that line uh what i would say is my personal experience it just felt very scrappy the whole time as in <laughs> i was only director for a year because that's kind of how our team operated we mm -hmm. for whatever reason only picked directors for one year that's how it mm -hmm. usually worked mm -hmm. um by the time that year ended i finally i felt like i had finally figured it out and then <laughs> it was like oh man but yeah. yeah to answer that question like it was super tough to kind of balance everything. Um, going into that director role, I kind of underestimated how much time outside of rehearsals that would be needed. You know, definitely mm -hmm. underestimated that, um, which also then made me stressed about school, about growing outside of dance as well. Um, and yeah, it's a tough question to answer because to be honest, I don't think at that time I ever really figured it out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. You want to weigh in, Kevin? I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's got to be tough. Yeah, it's hard because I, I think the biggest thing about being a leader really um, is that you, like, eat last. You eat last, can I say that? You know? Yeah, yeah like, I, I have to make sure that everyone else is kind of set up for success first because that's my responsibility. That's what I agreed to do. So um, for me, like, it's been, it's far, it, I guess over, after a couple of years, you realize, like, how far and in between um your your own self growth <laughs> is and, dance, and stuff right? yeah like it's basically i don't have as much time and it's great to see others grow but sometimes it's like difficult to see like oh like but what about me you know like i, I sometimes you just want to be like i just want to learn you know like i don't yeah. want to direct i want to yes. teach i just want to learn you know mm -hmm. you ever like, feel like that yeah definitely <laughs> i mean like even recently it's like i can't take this class because i have to block you know it's oh, like yeah. it's just kind of totally, like i have yeah. to do what i have to do first you know mm -hmm. and it's it's tough so i mean like i i think that it's kind of a motivator too interestingly enough to like want to be able to grow yourself as well for your team like mm -hmm. um it's just it's difficult to find that that time. line right mm -hmm. how to where to invest how to invest your time yes yeah i think i do hear that saying leaders eat last a lot um how i think recently i started thinking about it just kind of reframing it um you guys know it like you guys probably been in planes before when they um when they do their whole like <laughs> the whole thing, right? Yes. They, and then the masks fall. Do you guys remember what they say? They usually say, if you have a child, put your mask on first and then put your child's on first. And I really started to like question, why do they do that? Like, obviously, you want to take care of your child first, put the mask on them. But then it's kind of that, um, what's it called? A concept of like, you got to take care of your fir yourself first to help others. So I was going to suggest like, eat first, Kevin. <laughs> eat first so you can feed your team that mm -hmm. way. Because if you eat last, then you won't have enough energy to feed your team, if that makes yeah. sense. So, but it's still hard. Like, it's still very hard to keep yourself fed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think it really dials down to like how you manage your time and like where to like really put everything. I know recently you just... um Meal prep. <laughs> <laughs> I started that, guys. <laughs> That's great. No, I meant recently. So you really feed yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I meant like recently you just quit your, your day job. Oh, yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And well, how was that decision? <laughs> um, okay. So it's a decision. I mean, I had, it's interesting because I like always jumped in and out of being the full-time worker and stuff. I don't think I've held a job for longer than a year and a half. Um, only because it's like this whole studio situation this all dance career situation is kind of like calling me you know it's like moana in the ocean you know <laughs> um but basically like he um, loves moana i love movie. moana <laughs> but basically i feel like my decision process was really based off of i think when we met as owners and we were like here's the plan here's the three-year plan and i was like how are okay we, we have that? a plan there's no how are we gonna do that yeah. you know like we're already like filling our cup uh, to kind of follow your example it's like our cups are filled and stuff it's like how do we get a bigger cup and it's yeah, like okay basically. let me just be the bigger cup right and so 
in order to achieve these things to succeed, I was like, I gotta do this. It's because if it's like, if not you now, made that sacrifice. yeah, like if not now, when? You know, who's gonna do it? Someone has to do it. Like, we can't like not, or just say like, well, we didn't have time. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like it's like, we're, I don't get, I don't know. Again, it's this whole pushing 30 yeah. thing. I, I think it's just that whole like, I don't know. Like, I just gotta do it, you know? Like, How do does it, it now. feel after making that decision? Like, do you feel like your time management is better? like to self-care and dance yeah know? like i think the big thing was really starting to go into my fitness journey and stuff like that was something that has always been hold holding me back in terms of even just dancing because my core was so weak that my back started feeling it and like my knees started hurting and they're like inflamed and stuff and it's like it's a lot of the stuff could be remedied if i just took care of my body a little better and stuff and so i'm much happier now <laughs> than i feel like i've been in light of like a lot of crazy things going on right now but like i'm like overall i'm like happier than i've ever been i think because i've been able to find that balance and stuff being able to work at the studio eight hours and but then i still have my mornings for myself and my meal prep and my eating and like and take care of yourself taking care of myself mm -hmm. skincare <laughs> <laughs> you know like it's yes. just it's yeah like i'm just able to do it all like everything that i've wanted to do and and Financially, yes, it's still tough because, you know, we're still a very young studio. Um, but ultimately, I think it's just, you know, YOLO. <laughs> like, you know? YOLO. YOLO. Um, I agree with you fully. Um, let's take let's take one question from our community. Um, I want to kind of include them in their conversations, too. Um, so before we run out of time, I want to let's see question <laughs> maybe two questions <laughs> what advice would you give to someone who wants to attract another person using dance is there a mating call <laughs> so i heard if you do the whoa enough times <laughs> it'll work so just, just keep going every day <laughs> that's a mating call <laughs> come here oh my god so whenever you guys see that that's what it means yeah. just kidding. <laughs> i don't know call. you know what's like what's attractive to me is confidence. I think that's what it is. So the mating call could be any type type of dance. If you do it uber confidently and you're like, yeah, like that's me. Like then that's what's attractive to me. You know, I don't care if it's dance. I don't care if it's like singing. I don't know. Yeah, just be confident. That's what's the, yeah, that's the mating call right there. <laughs> I don't know if the question is like, how do you attract other dancers if you're into them? But I, um, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like just do your thing. You know what I mean? It's kind of like in life, you know, like a really like just hone into whatever you're into. Like do you. <laughs> and then someone's going to like your the way you dance or the way you approach things. True. Yeah, you know I, I think mean? the actual like mentality to it is, like you said, just be yourself, dance mm -hmm. the way you want to dance, and the right person will be attracted to it. Right, right, yeah. right. <laughs> I, know, I think that's I said this in though. a previous episode. It was like, <laughs> who are you without dance? Like, that's the person they're going to Oh, that was fall good. I remember you know? Ooh, that. that too. So yeah. you, it just can't be all about dance. You yeah, know what I mean? There's also like dance. that underneath. So it's yeah. like, cool, you're a cool dancer. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> I know, what's next? What's under the... But hit the whoa a few times. Um, other question, when did you dance, well, no, when did dance start to become a priority in your life balance? What made you decide you wanted to invest more time in it? Ooh. For me, I think it was from the get go. I think, um, I, so the way I started dancing was when I was in high school, ABDC was kind of going on and that's when I found out about like Kaba Modern and all that stuff. And I, that's when I found out that there's like college dance teams. And so right. I was like super ready to dance, but, but I was like, I have to be in college first because for some <laughs> reason I thought I connected the two. So I think from the get go, I've always been like, okay, I want to be really good at this. I want to do it. I want to make it a priority. And yeah, what sucked about that was then because my school suffered a lot because uh. I went in thinking like, all right, I'm gonna do those 4 a.m. rehearsals. Like I was excited about those 4 a.m. rehearsals, <laughs> but sometimes it'd be fun. <laughs> that's when I started treating it, I guess, as a priority. Um, I would say towards the end of my college career, that's when I started actually weighing like, is this actually a priority in my life? So I guess mm -hmm. the more serious part of that question mm -hmm. was maybe like three or four years after that. So okay. yeah, mm. yeah. I think for me it was like once everything else was settled in graduated college um found my first full-time job at that point i was like okay cool now let's dance <laughs> like um i think it was um honestly the first time i 
made it onto a dance team and seeing other people just as driven and just being around the people and it's like oh like like I, I found my people <laughs> <laughs> like it's it just made sense at that point i think it was like it just felt right following my gut like let's i'm already investing a lot of time into this and it's not making me unhappy you know like so let's do it like mm -hmm. let's just let's just commit put it up there in your priorities mm -hmm. awesome um i want to love i would love to talk about our time management more obviously our individual experiences even and how we all deal and have dealt with things like struggles in our um lives um also i also want to talk about where you guys are with your dance and life <laughs> however <laughs> we will do that in the next episode so stay tuned um audience you can subscribe on youtube channel on our youtube channel and clicking that little bell icon will give you notifications on when we have new releases um also we're on spotify where you can check out our entire season one and our previous um between us foods videos i'm sorry podcasts <laughs> as well as um subscribe for future episodes so once again this has been donita richard and kevin we'll catch you on the flip side Thank you.